And so the point is like ideology basically keeps us like feeling like we have the, the enjoyment in the sense of like, it offers us forms of enjoyment. Right. But at the same time, like the real, the real sublime enjoyment, it, it, it keeps at bay through explaining to us why we lack gives us a narrative of why we're not fulfilled. So, um, yeah, I wrote a line by line commentary of that first chapter of sublime object. It's on my blog. Uh, my blog's called the dangerous. Maybe it's on medium. And there I shared the link. So that one, um, I wrote a long time ago. Uh, well, at least a couple of years ago. So what I, I put together like a sus really succinct version of what I think like, Basically, in these lecture notes, I had summaries of all six chapters of Sublime Object of Ideology. We, we didn't come close to getting to these, but let me read this real quick. So, excuse me. <clears throat> the key insight of chapter one is how capitalism and all symbolic orders are symptomatic. They intrinsically generate an antagonism that defines them, sustains them, and undermines them. The symptom of capitalism is the proletariat. The proletariat is the possibility, impossibility of capitalism. Uh, you don't have capitalism without wage labor, but the wage labor is precisely what will come, according to Marx, to undermine the system. So it's both the condition of possibility and the condition of impossibility of capitalism, and thereby it makes it its symptom. So ideology obfuscates this internal deadlock this traumatic reel the capitalists don't force you to work there is a fair exchange right like that's liberal ideology trying to cover over the intrinsic deadlock or antagonism between capitalists and worker by smoothing out that traumatic reel i know it's funny to call this class struggle that but that's what it is and um ideology covers it over by you know saying oh well it's you know there's a fair exchange or you're not being forced to work etc uh, we can use psychoanalytic concepts on society itself since it too is symptomatic there is a homology a structural likeness between the commodity and the symptom i.e the dream or the par prayer parapraxis <clears throat> slip of the tongue so the commodity and the dream are both formal distortions. In other words, the commodity is ideological through and through because of how it conceals the traumatic source of its value, the extraction of surplus value through the exploitation of wage labor. The commodity is the formal distortion that the labor of the proletariat is the source of value. Like that's what the commodity hides or conceals or covers over the traumatic source of its value, which is the exploitative labor of the proletariat, right? So that's what the commodity formally distorts or conceals, and that's its ideology. The commodity is a magic trick that makes value-producing labor disappear under the illusion of the commodity as its own intrinsic source of its value. Just as the formal mechanism of the dream work, which for Freud, the dream work is the structure of the dream, or the configuration of the dream, which involves displacement and condensa condensation. Those are the two formal structures of dreams for Freud. So <clears throat> just as the formal mechanism of the dream work makes desire disappear, that is, obfuscates the role desire has in the translation of latent content into manifest content. <clears throat> That's the point, right? Like commodity and dream both have the same structure they're formal distortions that hide the their their sources right <clears throat> all you see in the commodity is like oh it has a kind of seductive aura to it and it has a price on it and it's like oh well it just intrinsically has this value well <clears throat> in the dream it's as if the latent content the hidden meaning and the manifest meaning just kind of have their own spontaneous connections, right? What you don't see in the dream is how the subject's own desire has come to take the latent content and translate it into 
the manifest content. The whole point of uh, dream analysis is not to take the manifest content and figure out its latent content. The trick is to see how desire itself has inscribed the latent content in the form of manifest content. Like it's to arrive at what is secretly in the, in the relationship between manifest content and latent content. What you're really trying to get at is why desire did translated latent content into manifest content the way it did. Right. But the desire of the subject is like phenomenologically speaking, it's missing from the dream just as wage labor is missing from the appearance of the commodity. <clears throat> so what we miss is the formal transformation of desire into dream content, both latent and manifest and labor into exchange value slash price. The ideology of the commodity is its fetishism. The imaginary symbolic appearance of the commodity makes it seem to have an intrinsic value of its own, which hides the traumatic real source of its value, exploitation of the wage laborer. Every society has its real symptom, and ideology is the concealment of it and the production of social reality, which is the imaginary symbolic reality minus its real symptom slash antagonism. So that's that. I hope that was of some help. Thank you. And I before closing out, um, I want to say that it's an honor to have you on because I know that you are in popular demand and that you are too busy to ever take on anything. People want you to lead discussion groups and teach classes and write things on specific things and and, and you're not able to do that. And, you know, you, the conferences and, and presentations and you're just, you have to say no because you're a wage laborer. Broke and as fuck. You're broke as fuck, but you are going platinum in the age of Netflix in the blog world. <laughs> That's a funny way to put it, but okay. Well, you put it that way because you are, you just found out that you, and you're humble. Wait, did you just return my own method? Did I actually say that? You I'm did going, say that. You're right. I, you know, I forgot. I totally forgot. I put it like that. I for, Yeah, I've got the receipts. So you said it. But here's the thing is like, the, it's not a joke. Like we actually just find, found this out this week, everybody. So this is really exciting news for anybody who's been along for the ride. But like uh, some people are just starting to figure out what I've known for a while about Michael. And so, um, he is the number one theorist as far as like a person who's talking about theory, writing about theory on a blog, blog, a theorist blogger in the world. And so well, I don't know, but that's a bold statement. I don't know well, about that. I know that like what, what in, you in specific, it's, hold on. Let me correct myself. Cause I don't want to sound foolish, but I mean, cause I don't obviously mean like for, theory in general i'm talking about the specific area that you're focused on you're the only person doing what you're doing in the way that you're doing okay but the point is is that if you want to know about lacan or if read an article about there oh my gosh we're, we're gonna get into it in a second but there's there's such a broad area where if you go to google uh, from any computer with any ip address with any search history with any algorithm well, that's that might not be true because if you're actually really into this stuff, maybe you'll see other things. Maybe if you have a lot of these other you know things that you've already searched before, maybe your algorithm wouldn't show you. But if you're coming from like a normie computer and you look up like Lacan theory, um, almost anything. No, that you it's could... like OJ Ah, OJ Petit Ah. Yeah, OJ Ah, like the phallus, the the Borromean knot. Um, well, okay, but here's the thing. We didn't realize this until just like a, a few days ago and we hadn't even confirmed it yet because we had to still do the searches from other people's computers. That took a couple of days. But it's just like, no, this is why he's actually getting so many reads it, on such niche topics is because like he's doing a really good job. And so I, the fact is, is like if you want to know about OJA, you read the post about it. And the idea that people are coming here and not reading it is like, y'all, you don't understand what's going on. Like, I, I realized that the conversations we were having was my favorite content that I was doing. It completely changed everything about what I'm doing. So uh, a lot of people are really stoked and appreciative 
of this move because this is an opportunity for everyone for something really cool to happen. So, but what I was trying to say is thank you. We'll get a little bit more into like what you've actually just go ahead. Yeah. So how did you find out that you're going platinum in the age of Napster? You, I mean, you, you pointed out like, Hey, uh, you Google Oak J Petit Ah, you're one of the first things that comes up. So like, yeah. Uh, I so he put in OJ off for OJ Petit off. So it's Wikipedia and then it's me. And then it's no subject, which is the Lacanian site. And then you start getting journals and stuff. Um, so, yeah, and we started checking, right? And it's like that for a lot of these. So, for example, like Baudrillard. Baudrillard, Apocalypse Now. But you know, he has this famous um, analysis of Apocalypse Now and uh, Simulacra and Simulation. Yeah, you Google that, I'm the first thing that pops up. Um, let's see, Lacan, Alice. Alice? Yeah, like Lacan, you, like, oh, oh Lacan's Alice. concept. If you just Google Lacan's He's Alice... Not. Yeah, it's no subject, and then some uh, Leon Brenner, who's a Lacanian, and then me. So it's just like, yeah, I was kind of blown away by all this. I didn't know. And, like, and, and for 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 people who don't understand, like, okay, look, if you the phallus is a very confusing, very very confusing, very hard to pin down. Um, one could say slippery, <laughs> uh, uh, concept and. It's a little concept, and uh, Michael breaks it down. And and the thing is, is when when I originally read Gender Trouble the first time I read it, I did not know what the phallus was, and whatever Butler says was not clear. And so, you know, I talked to Michael about it and stuff like that, and he was like, "This is a hard one," and talked about how hard it is and how serious he takes it and how many books he has but to read before he can. How many books he has to read before he's even going to be able to talk about it? And so it's like when he finally wrote the post on it, I was like, oh, my God, if I'd had this when I read Gender Trouble, I was so lucky. And the thing is, is like I know people give us reports. Oh, they're reading The Dangerous Maybe in their graduate class or whatever. And it's like or in, in their undergraduate class, you know, we, we, all over the place. And so it's like that's exciting because the fact is, is when I was in those classes, I didn't have that resource. And the fact is, is I don't know if I would even go to college now. If I had the dangerous maybe fucking blog, I don't know if I'd go for theory. Go go for something else. There's a lot of other, you know, things you can major in. Yeah, but you can just get roll up your sleeves and like actually like get a hold of these concepts. So I'm stoked. And and the fact is, is what I was saying, tying it all back around, is that I'm honored because I know you're a really, really busy person who's always exhausted. You hate wage labor, and that's why we're doing hashtag free Mikey's because I'm the only person so far who's having conversations with you. Now, obviously, you're welcome to go on other places, and I know a couple of people who are going to have you on in the next couple of years, but there's obviously like right now, things are so hindered by the fact that you are unable to actually have any of your time energy, and we've talked and talked about that. And so the point is, is the free Mikey thing is you just look, if you get any value from this, if you've got the that college debt money or your parents' money or professor money or whatever it is and you get value from this like michael has like literally put his entire life as a forward as a as a sacrifice and and it's crazy what he's actually done in those 15 years before he got thrown in or 12 years or whatever it was before you got thrown into wage labor but the fact is is we'll get you right back out of it as fast as we can because the fact is is we need to do a lot more of this stuff and and it's we're just getting started and we're gonna have like 20 to 50 other awesome channels people doing their own thing as well and i don't know if some of those will be big some of those will be small it doesn't matter and a lot of people will go do their own thing and and it, like to losing guitars could just b build a few tables of contents help with the robot thing that we're programming and then just go off and like do a bunch of other cool stuff but like it's it's you know it's free association we're trying to use the internet something developed by anti-communists to do something cool we know we can't do a leftism on here because to do a leftism on the internet is like plotting to rob a bank from the lobby of a police station so obviously we're not doing that we're not talking about crazy ideas project mayhem is tongue-in-cheek it's all very ironic but the point is is like we're gonna at least learn some concepts on here because that's one thing that we can productively do 
with these technologies that are at our disposal, if we can can kind of rein it in, focus, and make sure to come back and repeat things that we do and don't just come at it, listen to it, have opinions and go. Like, no, develop your critique over years, years, years. I've gone into $60,000 of debt so that I can finally get to the point where certain things that we're talking about make sense to me. Um, and then I've also spent years being broke since then focusing on this stuff with a mo with my free time with Michael. So it's awesome that you all get to uh, get something from this as well. I obviously would do this um, regardless of of platform or, or, or audience or whatever. I like no matter what, I'm always going to be a thinker and, and, and or an, you know, an aspiring thinker. And so is Michael. But if, if you're along for the ride, then welcome here. And, and seriously, though, Michael, I, I really appreciate you being here and giving so much of your time. And I know you've been really exhausted and you got COVID and then you got sick again. You had bronchitis and now your foot got hurt and then you got hurt, got hurt again. And so like mm -hmm. the last two months have been crazy for you. They've been crazy for me. I've been sick twice, um, traveling a lot, like th three or four trips I've been on in a very short period of time. It's like, I want to, anyway, all of this is to say is there's a lot going on we're working on and we're really excited about it. And um, it's been really great having everybody in the chat as well. Really appreciate you all for being here. Yeah, I'm losing it. So over time, we'll get to go a lot deeper. And so just, I, I, we just ask that you come at Zizek um, as, a, as not just a meme or like a, a fucking Sam Harris, but like uh, treat him like, at, at least, if you're going to give the devil his due, if you're going to actually do a criticism, if you actually respect us, or at least Michael, and he's saying that this is like one of the greatest thinkers, then, you know, actually like, take that seriously for a while because you have to give the devil his due. Like I'm saying, I've got criticisms for people that I've been paying attention to for a long time. And the thing is, is like, I respect them. That's why I'm doing it. But like, I'm talking about like people that I read, like Levinas. I disagree with Levinas or Deleuze and Guattari on so many things. But like, and even like, other, I, I disagree with most Marxists on most things, on a lot of things, at least. I mean, maybe not always the most essential things, but on a lot of things, right? And so point being, like, critique is cool, but like, you, we've got to show the respect of the fact that like these are not us shooting the shit. If these are real lectures. These are real lectures in a new format that's never really, I mean, it's being fleshed out by this generation of, of, of creators and thinkers. So anyway, yeah, it's been great having you on, Michael. It's been great having you all in the chat. Thanks for having so I really appreciate it, everybody. I think we've said everything, so we can probably clear out now. Have a good night, everybody.